Hey guys, this is Seth Turin, and today I'm going to talk about a couple of the hidden gems in UBOT Studio 4.0. Those are multi-threading and sockets. Now, multi-threading is the process of taking action commands and running them in parallel with each other. So, whereas normally you would have them running one after another after another, through multi-threading you can have all of them run at the same time which considerably speeds up your marketing processes. All right, so let me demonstrate what I mean by this. To do this, we're going to go to the UBOT Playground at ubotstudio.com slash playground. We'll go to our simple form. And I'm just going to make a really simple account creator really quickly. So we're going to just drag our fields over and drag in our relevant data. Okay. And then when we're done with that, we're going to click our submit button. And what did we forget? We forgot to navigate to the page in the first place. Let's drag our navigate over. Okay, so if we run this, we see that it's going to fill in our account data for us and then create the account. And of course, we want to make sure that every time it runs this, it's going to use a different set of account data. So we're going to go to data commands and reset account. And now every time we run this, and now every time we run this, going to give us a different account. Excellent. Now, of course, we don't just want one account. We want a whole bunch of accounts. So we're going to go to flow commands. We're going to drag in a loop. And we'll say that we want this done five times. All right, and we move our entire script inside the loop, so it's going to repeat this five times. Now, there's just a couple more changes I want to make here. From flow command, we want to be able to see what's happening while it's doing it, because this goes really fast. So just for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to drag in some wait commands. And we just want to wait one second in between each command. And that's just going to give us time so that we can see what it is we're working with. And after the click, we're going to say, wait for browser event, and wait for everything loaded. Now, if we run this, We're going to have to wait through this each time because it's running through these commands one at a time. So this is going to take a while. So let's just go ahead and stop that. And what we're going to do instead is we're going to put it inside a thread. So we're going to drag a thread command over. And now anything we put in this thread will run separately from the main script. So we can have as many of these threads running, and each time it goes through the loop, it's going to run the thread parallel to all of the other ones. So I'm going to show you what I mean in a second, but there's one other thing we need, and that's to have all of it load in a new browser window, because it won't make sense for it to load all of these in the main browser. 
So we're going to drag in our new in new browser command. And then we're going to drag all of these commands inside the in new browser. Okay, so what we have now is a script. Inside the script, we have a loop. The loop is going to run for five cycles. Now for each of these loop cycles, it's going to launch a thread. That thread is going to run completely independently of the rest of the script. Inside the thread, it's going to launch a new browser window. And inside the new browser window, it's going to do the create account it's going to do that little create account script that we made earlier. So let's give this a run and see what happens. So as you can see, it's pushed our browser off to the side here and we now have five little tiny mini browsers with our account creation scripts running inside them. These are all happening at the same time. And if you click one, you get to see it'll load up in the, in the main browser. Let's do this again and I'll show you. So right now, this is a main browser. These are my mini browsers. And I can see where each one of them is. So you see they all have different names. They're all doing separate processes, but all running at the same time. They're running side by side instead of in order. So as you can see, this is a really nice little elegant way to kind of manage multiple threads, multiple browsers, multiple browsers all running at the same time. So as you can see, you can have a bunch of different scripts running at the same time. That's going to really speed up your processes. All right, so that's it for multi-threading. Now I want to talk a little bit about sockets. Now, to get what's going on with sockets, you need to understand what a socket actually is. I think there's some confusion about this on the internet. People think it's different things. A socket is just the base level information transfer mechanism for the internet. So what's happening when I'm going to a website is that my computer is talking to a server somewhere and pulling back information from the server. That information transfer, that's the socket. At least that's kind of a broken down explanation of it. Now at the socket level, all you have is a raw transfer of HTML. The purpose of a web browser is to take that HTML and make sense of it. So when you're looking at a web browser, you start with the socket and then it parses the HTML. It parses the JavaScript, it parses the CSS. Okay, so far none of that takes much time. But then it has to load outside files, so any outside JavaScript files, outside CSS files, outside images, uh, or even iframes. It has to make separate socket calls to all of those files. So what was just a single socket connection is now maybe five, maybe 10, maybe 20 different connections that you have made just to load a single web page. Now on top of that, it has to actually draw everything. So it has to render all of the CSS, it has to render all of the text, and it has to show all of the images. Now those last two sections, loading the outside files and rendering everything to the page, is what makes browser automation take so long. Now with UBOT4, you have a lot of control over the browser so that you can actually strip out all of that loading and all of that rendering and strip the browser basically down to just its socket and parsing mechanisms, which of course the parsing is negligible the amount of time it takes. Now the great thing about that is that you can still use all of UBOT Studio's commands as normal. I mean, you can't use image recognition, of course, but as far as typing in different pieces of text and clicking buttons, everything still works the same, but you don't have that overhead of loading the outside files and having to draw everything to the browser, so it works much, much faster. 
All right, now there is one downside, and that is that you, it still has to initialize the browser. So when it first creates the browser, there's a little bit of time just setting it up. But after that's done, it works as fast as a socket does, but with all of that added power from UBOT Studio still there. So it's a really great way to do sockets. Now let me show you how this works. We're going to go into settings commands. And as you can see, I have a bunch of commands here that give me control over the over the browser. So we can put these commands into the new browser command here and it'll control what that browser does. So we have clear cookies, we don't need that right now. We have change proxy. And by the way, just to note, each one of these browsers, if you have five of them running together, multi-threaded, you can have each of them on a separate proxy and with a different user agent, with a different refer. All of them can be different. So that, that's extremely powerful because you can make your UBOT look like an army of a hundred different users coming from different IPs using different browsers. And that gives you a lot of power of what you can do with your SEO or marketing agenda. All right, so we don't need any of those right now though. What we do want is set visibility because that's going to turn off our rendering. And this alone is going to make it much, much faster. All right, now we also have a few more down here. We don't want to allow images because that's going to make it have to load images. We don't want that. We don't want to allow CSS. We don't want any flash. Now granted there isn't any flash on this site so this doesn't really matter but I'm just demonstrating it. Now I'm not going to disable JavaScript because there's actually some JavaScript on this page that I need to be there. So I'm going to leave that but you can see how we could strip it down to just the socket if we needed to and if we want different functionality we can actually fine tune it so that we can get exactly what we need. If we need to have just images but we don't need all this other stuff then we can have just images so we have a lot of power over exactly what you want your browser to be even if you just want it to be a socket. Alright so we're gonna go ahead and run this and when I do this you're gonna have to just trust me that it's still doing everything it did before but it's doing it invisibly alright so I'm going to click the run button now when I click it because it takes a little bit of time to initialize the browsers it's gonna freeze for a minute now that's okay if it freezes it's just initializing those browsers if you just let it be it's gonna come back so I'm gonna click run alright it's running it's doing what it says it's, it, it's doing the account creation process and we're just gonna have to believe it it's all invisible at this point so it's just running in the background alright and I recommend and it's already finished so it's I, I recommend if you want to take a stopwatch and actually time it you can see that it's visibly faster um, of course I put these delays in there these one second waits in there so it's actually gonna be limited by that but you can see that it's it's noticeably faster when you strip it down to the sockets like this. So I, I recommend that you do some experiments and see what you can get out of that. Uh, but you can see how quick that was. Now, because we're not loading these, I don't recommend that you do this with 20 visible browsers. But because these are invisible, we can go ahead and ramp this up and we can have 20 of these if we want. So we're going to have 20 separate threads running in sockets all making accounts for us at the exact same time. And we run this. And again, it's going to freeze a second because it's got to initialize all those browsers. But then once it's done with that, it's going to be running all of those and it's going to be totally smooth. alright and now it's running it's doing each different account now of course you're gonna be limited by your actual connection speed so even if you have however many threads running in parallel 
it's still only going to be able to send so much data at a time. But what you're doing when you're multi-threading is you're maximizing that. See, usually when you're using a browser, you're using only a fraction of what your internet and what your computer is actually capable of. So by multi-threading, you're kind of pushing it to the limit and you're getting all of that capability out of it at the same time. You're getting more power in less time. And ultimately, that's what's going to make us money. All right, and there you have it. Even at 20 threads, it works very efficiently and without much slowdown. Now, granted, I have a decent computer, so it's going to be somewhat dependent on how fast your computer is, how well it can deal with the various threads. But you can see that whatever power your internet and your computer have, you can really push it to its limit and maximize the amount of value that you're getting out of it with multi-threading and sockets. So have fun with this. This is an extremely powerful feature. And I hope you have a lot of fun pushing your bots to their money-making potential.